Okay, so 1800s, Carl Friedrich Gauss worked out a lovely technique, you know, it's very, very straightforward and so forth, for actually solving systems of equations. So linear equations, we'll see with linear, he found that linear has equations that have great depth and great structure to them. Anyone that's taken a linear algebra course at college knows that linear algebra actually is surprisingly deep with phenomenal uh, geometric uh, interpretations and, and connections and all the rest. However, for the experience of high school students, all we've done so far is the JCC matrices for networks as an idea of what a matrix could be and what makes sense for matrix multiplication. And now we've got a completely different story coming from a different direction about analyzing linear equations, in particular systems of linear equations. So here's a three by three system of equations, three equations and three unknowns. And a natural way to attack this one is to say, all right, Let's make this system of equations pretty easy. For example, the third equation is simplest because it's got only two variables in it, not all three mentioned. In fact, if I could make that third equation so simple, it only has one variable mentioned, something z equals some number, then I'll know what z is. So let's go through the process of trying to manipulate these equations using what we believe about balanced equations, equality from the last little piece, and see if we can make this much, much simpler. For example, my brain sees a 2x here and sees an x there. And it would be nice if I could make that middle equation simpler. Get rid of the x's. So I could double the first equation and subtract the second equation. Excuse me, su subtract the, the two, first and second equation. Take this equation minus double that equation. So 2x's take away 2x's would be 0. Negative 4 y's take, y's take away another 2 y's would be negative. Oops, sorry. First equation I'm not touching. Let's be clear, sorry. 4z equals 12. Second equation I'm changing. 2x's take away is double that is 0. Negative 4y take away 2y's, negative 6y's. 5z's take away uh, 8z's is negative 3z's equals 0. Take away 2 12's is negative 24. And I'll leave the third equation untouched because I can only do one thing at a time in my brain. I'm slow that way. All right, great. Um, so I've made the second equation a bit simpler. In fact, let me go through that second equation. It looks like everything's a multiple of uh, negative 3. So let's just uh, divide by negative 3. So that's plus 2 plus z divided by negative 3 is plus 8. Yep, multiply through by uh, negative 1 third. And it looks like actually I've got this nice 2y, 2y here. I can actually make this third equation much simpler by subtracting the second equation from it. So keep the first equation the same. Equals 12. Keep the second equation the same equals 8. 2y take away 2y is no y's. Uh, negative z take away z is negative 2z equals 4 take away uh, and 8 is negative 4. And beautiful. I can stop there actually because negative 2z is negative 4. z is 2. Knowing what z is 2, I get uh, 2y is 6, y is 3. Knowing that y is 3, z is 2, I get x is something. All right, great. So this is the process of Gaussian elimination using properties of equality to make each equation basically become sort of the staggered effect. I could actually get rid of this y2 by subtracting off the y's and get rid of these z stuff. So I actually do a nice diagonal line here and make it really obvious what the solution is. But you know, this process here is enough to get to the solution. Now, grand and lovely, but if you do this after a while, you get awfully tired of writing out the numbers. For example, if I gave you an a system of 2x plus 2y minus 3z plus w equals 18, and you know, negative x plus uh, 7y minus 3z plus uh, 2w is 12, and so on. If I gave you, say, four equations like that, you would get awfully bored of writing out all the variables all the time. So it seems natural just to encode the numbers. All I actually was using here is the numbers, the coefficients. So maybe I'll encode this as 2, 2, negative 3, 1. I'll maybe do a bar to separate the 18, that's the equal sign. And negative 1, 7, negative 3, 2 is 12. Maybe the next equation was 0. 8, negative 3, negative 3 is 0, and maybe it's a 7, 17, negative 3 again. Oh, that's negative 13, 5, 11. There is a code for my 4x4 four four system of equations and four unknowns. I've basically done an array. I've held these coefficients in a matrix, in a table. Matrix means the background stuff that holds things in place. Voila! So I could just do the same work here. For example, this second equation, I could double it, get negative 2 here and the rest, and then add the first equation to it. That, that'll give me a 0 there. But I'm going to try to shoot to get all this as being 0, 0, 0s. Sorry, all these numbers will change, but in this situation, I can read off what the answer is. All right. Grand, lovely, Gaussian elimination is actually very natural and very easy, and high school students, in fact, even younger students, can actually handle this with ease. It's kind of fun, it feels like a little logic puzzles. It's good stuff. But then comes a realization that 
we have this matrix, like I might call it matrix C for all the coefficients equals some, I don't know, what do you call that, a column of things, some something. I'm loath to use the word vector, so I have to talk about vectors at another stage. People call that a column vector, but I'm, I wouldn't bring that in right now. So I've got C times stuff. Now, I can't help but notice, and this was a long time coming for mathematicians, so don't assume it's natural and obvious. It shouldn't just be like a piece of cake to kids saying, well, duh, of course we've got matrix multiplication going on here. Don't ever do that. Mathematicians struggle with this for decades. So just be honest. And we can build, we can stand on the shoulders of those people that do all the hard work. But I can't help but see a connection between that and all these rows here <laughs> and this column here having specially just done the matrix multiplication of adjacency matrices, matrices, I can't help but thinking of this, okay, I've got a matrix C, and I've never done a matrix of just one width before, but it's kind of, see it happening, is 18, 12, 0, 11. I can kind of see that I can encode, if I've now got that extra leap of having thought matrix multiplication in my life before, Maybe I'm going to do matrix multiplication on things that aren't even square matrices. There's a nice way to encode all that. Now, of course, the natural question is, ha ha ha. Since I was shooting for the sort of a simplified version, wouldn't it be amazing if I can convert my numbers to something of the form 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, stuff, 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 zero, stuff, 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 stuff. All right. But let me go even further. In fact, the simplest, simplest, simplest of equations in four unknowns I could solve would be x equals some number, a, y equals some number, b, z equals some number, c, and w equals some number. If I had one, 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 I had all these ones, and I had zeros everywhere else, that would be the ideal, the absolute ideal matrix system of equations of all time. Piece of cake, I just read off the answer. So that tells me there's something special about the matrix with nothing but zeros everywhere except for ones on the main diagonal. So I now have motivation to understand when can I get this matrix? What does it mean? Because if I've ever got it in a system of equations, it's a piece of cake. So now I've got context for wanting to talk about that guy. Hmm, then we have to talk about that guy now, I guess. Let's have fun with that. Next video.